Look at there, guys. A little rage crawl in the jaw. That was fun. There'll be another one in there with him. That's the thing. What's up, guys? It's Alex Rudd with Monster Bass, and today we're going to be talking about flipping a crawl style bait for big bass in the pre-spawn. So first of all, let's get right into this video and start talking about my setup for flipping a bait like this. So the bait that I'm using today specifically is the Strike King Rage Crawl. This is an awesome little crawl style bait. It has these flapping appendages. This really puts off a lot of action in the water. It does a good job of representing not only a crawfish, but a bluegill, a bait fish, a perch, anything that you guys can think of that a bass wants to eat. This thing can do a really good job of mimicking it. Now I'm pairing that up with a four aught straight shake flipping hook. The reason I like to do that is because that straight shake flipping hook just has a lot more of a gap. It really allows that hook to dig in, get in those fish's mouth, and you're not going to lose as many. And then I like to pair it up with a tungsten flipping weight. Now the weight size is going to vary depending on what kind of cover you're fishing, any kind of current or anything like that. And so for today I'm using a 316 ounce. Now like I say it can vary. If you're fishing a little more dense cover um, and you want to fall a little bit quicker obviously kind of bump it up go to a 3 8 ounce if you're fishing even thicker cover you're wanting to get it into some log jams or into some grass bump up to a half ounce and like i said if you're fishing in current use a half ounce or even a little bit heavier to make sure that, that bait's going to get to the bottom and you can effectively fish an area that's got a ton of current then the line that i'm pairing it up with is some 15 pound copolymer or fluorocarbon whatever you guys prefer i like the copolymer just because i have a lot of experience with it and it's something that i like to use now for my rod I'm using a 7.3 medium heavy. Um, the 7.3 gives me just enough length that I can effectively flip this bait. Um, and then that medium heavy fast action allows me to throw a little bit smaller weight like the 3 16 3 8 half ounce. It kind of covers that whole range. Obviously, if you bump up into a you know half ounce or bigger, you might want to get a little bit bigger rod, maybe a seven and a half foot medium heavy. And then I've got that paired up with a seven one gear ratio reel. And that is super important for when those fish run at you, when you hit them and they run out of that cover, start running towards deep water, you want to be able to catch up with them, pick up all that line and be able to get that hook into those fish's mouth really, really good so that they don't have a chance of coming off. The one thing that I do do this bait that is a quick modification is I like to paint the claws up. And now you can use either dip dye that you actually dip down into a jar. You know, you can see the dye that comes in the jar, uh, JJ's Magic or Spike at any of those brands. Or you can use a marker. And that's really what I like to do because I can be very specific with where I put that color. And so I'll use that Spike or dip dye marker, whatever brand that you prefer, and I'll paint those claws up. Today I'm using just a little bit of chartreuse because I think it does a really good job of not only putting just a little more flash out into this mixing water, but it also looks like a bluegill. If you guys ever see bluegills, swimming around um, if you watch their tail almost has like a little bit of a chartreuse flash now while we're out here fishing for these pre-spawners and even some spawners that's very important mimicking those bluegill will get a lot of big bites because those bass hate bluegill the reason for that is when they make a bed those bluegills will actually come into that bed and they'll eat the bass's eggs so those bass are very keen on keeping those uh, fish away from that bed and so when you're throwing something like this a lot of the time they won't try to run it away they'll just hammer it they'll kill it and when you throw that crawl in there you put it on their bed or you put it near their bed or you put it around any kind of pre-spawn fish that might be getting ready to make a bed they will eat it all right guys so let's talk about some of the things that i like to focus on when i'm fishing in a bait like this and when i'm flipping cover with a crawl so as you guys can see here we have a big log jam beaver dam i um, not really sure what this is. I just know it's a collection of a lot of um, driftwood that's kind of kind of collected here over time. These bass are going to use these areas, not only as staging areas, not only as spawning areas, but also as current breaks. Like I said, if you guys fish any kind of current, today we've got some wind that's creating current. Those bass are going to sit in behind these different sticks and kind of isolated pieces of wood that stick out away from the major in the main um, log jam there and use those as ambush points and use those as staging points to get ready to spawn. So what I like to do is just kind of start breaking this cover down. I like to go at it from a bunch of different angles. One important thing is to not just make one cast at something like this. When you just make one cast, you're kind of limiting to yourself to how many fish you can actually catch out of something like this. I mean, when you have something this big that runs this far out in the water, and you're fishing this time of year, you could have five, six, even 10 fish on something like this. So what I like to do 
and there goes the beaver right there huh that's pretty funny um what i like to do is actually uh go in here make a ton of cast at this thing a bunch of different angles let the current kind of just drift me down past it not really get on the trolling motor a whole lot only use it to kind of compensate for boat movement and that way i can really get in this area i can take my time i can be really quiet and hopefully get some fish to bite off this thing and really guys when i'm looking at stuff like this this is what i'm looking for i love isolated wood i love isolated boat docks i love big boulders anything isolated anything that allows a bass to get in behind it get up next to it to feel safe and to use it as an ambush point because a bass is a super simple creature it wants to eat it wants to make babies and it wants to repeat that process over and over and over again and the only other thing that really affects a bass is its ability to feel safe and its instinctual drive for self-preservation and being able to get up tight to something, being able to eat something, and then be able to make their babies, it hits all those instincts. It really helps to drive that self-preservation and to you know, get that bass to do what you want it to do, which is eat your crawl bait that you're flipping. Guys, thank you for watching and thank you for tuning in. We really do appreciate it over at Monster Bass. Once again, I'm Alex Rudd from Alex Rudd Fishing. My link will be down in the description. You guys can go check it out. There'll also be a link down in the description for the Monster Bass box. We're specifically making boxes not only for the time of year that you guys are fishing, but the region of the country that you live in. So go hit the link down below. You guys can check out all the box selections we have. You can also get baits just like the Rage Crawl in every month's box and you can go out, you can flip a Texas rig rage crawl and hopefully catch a bass of a lifetime. We'll see you guys next time.